in Nigeria and taken into slavery in present day Brazil. Today, my brother, my sister, our lecture is going to last 11 minutes. And I need you to open your ears and listen with rapt attention. Remember, in January, we decided that the whole month we're going to be looking at the great queens of Africa. <laughs> This is the African history class. And today we are looking at Louisa Mahin. Louisa Mahin. And Louisa is spelled L U I S A. Mahin is M A H I N. Now, Louisa Mahin. My brother, my sister was born circa. Remember, I said circa. Mm -mm -mm -mm. She was born circa 17. 80 1780 she was born circa 1780 in the 18th century and she was born my brother my sister in present day nigeria yoruba land and when she was born she was taken into slavery after a few years when slave raiders went into that area and captured some members of the area and carry them all the way to brazil today when you go to brazil there are a lot of indigenous yoruba people the language of the brazilian people some of them have the yoruba language in that today my brother my sister we are talking about louisa mine <laughs> Louisa Mine was born circa 1780. And she was born, my brother, my sister, in Africa. Some sources say she was born in Costa de Mina, in Africa, or in Bahia, in Brazil. But we authentically know that she was born in Yoruba land, right here in Africa, my brother, my sister. She was one of the most controversial people history ever had. And before this class ends, you will get to know exactly why we are saying what we are saying. Now, my brother, my sister, she was raised in a Yoruba family in present-day Nigeria amongst the ethnic group known as the Mai people. The Mai people, they were predominantly um, Yoruba people who were Muslims. And they call themselves the Mai people, M-A-I. And the I has two dots. The Mai people. If this is the very first time you are hearing about the Mai people, don't feel no way. The Mai people were a group of Yoruba speaking people, indigenous Yoruba people, who were Muslims. In fact, and they spoke fluent Arabic, all because of the Islamic language. They studied the Arabic language into detail and most of the time they spoke the arabic language in instead of speaking the yoruba language my brother my sister they took seriously islam they went to the mosque five times a day they fasted during the ramadan and if there was the opportunity they made the journey to the holy land of saudi arabia on pilgrimage today we are talking about louisa mine when she was born she had a muslim name her father was muslim her mother was muslim but because she was carried into slavery at a very young age her original name got missing at a very young age she was carried all the way on a ship across the transatlantic ocean carried all the way on the atlantic ocean all over and sent all the way to Bahia, right there in Brazil. Upon arrival, she was enslaved and she worked as a little child in slavery, worked very hard. When she attained the age of about 20, she walked to the slave master and asked the slave master, listen, am I going to work as a slave all my life? The slave master asked, do you want your freedom? She said, who doesn't? She said, well, it doesn't come on a silver platter. You would have to pay for your own freedom. She asked how much it cost. She said she would start saving 
to be able to buy her own freedom. And she was also to do some work for the slave master, extra work, my brother, my sister. She said, whatever it will take to free myself, legally, I will. Sometimes she worked late in the night. Sometimes when there were gatherings where all slaves were supposed to be, she would not be part of it, but she would be on the field working because all of this was supposed to be part of her journey to freedom. My brother, my sister, in 1812, when our heroine was only 32 years old, oh, she went to the slave master's room and said, how much did you say it will cost to buy my freedom? When he mentioned it again, he gave the slave master all the money, including a bonus. In fact, for not maltreating her like the other slaves on other plantations. In fact, so she was able, my brother, my sister, to buy her own freedom in 1812 at the age of 32 and when she got her freedom oh my god she made it hell for slavery in brazil she started organizing people for slave revolts she fought night and day organized men trained soldiers was able to pick up people and train them in guerrilla fighting in fact she was also the cook who cooked the food that will keep them active and alive whilst they fought for the freedom of all slaves on uh, the plantations my brother my sister originally coming from the mai family in yoruba land in present-day nigeria she was brought up as a Muslim. But when she saw how the Arabs were also part of slavery, she decided to abandon Islam. In fact, she didn't even want to hear about Christianity because she saw that the slave master used the Bible and also preached the Bible, yet he was nothing but a pale-faced rapist. My brother, my sister, at a very young age, she became a pagan. And decided that she would never be part of any religion because of the atrocities that both Islam and Christianity meted out in the days of slavery. My brother, my sister, in 1812, when she bought her freedom, she started dating. In fact, she dated a man who was a very powerful soldier. My brother, my sister. And this powerful soldier was dated all because she wanted to use him to be able to train other soldiers to fight for the freedom of the slaves on the plantation. My brother, my sister, on the 21st day of June in 1830, my brother, my sister, about 18 years after she bought her own freedom, oh, she gave birth to a son by name Louise Gonzaga Pinto de Gama. You want to hear it again? Louise Gonzaga Pinto de Gama. He was born on the 21st day of June in 1830. My brother, my sister, the son did not live longer. He died on the 24th day of August in 1882. My brother, my sister, at the age of um, um, 52. My brother, my sister, today we remember this great black woman. But listen to what she did. She organized slave revolts. She was able to chase the slave master out of Brazil. A woman. She was a master tactician. She was a woman who fought very hard to be able to free a lot of African slaves. She was a powerful black woman. She was a very powerful woman who lived on the hills and in the valleys of Bahia. In fact, now when the slave master realized that she was a threat, he went for backup. 
from Portugal brought in a lot of soldiers and much more superior ammunition and shelling up all the plantations destroying the plantations and also killing people my brother my sister the slaves fought back and when a lot of them were captured our heroine for today Louisa mine escaped now some sources said she was arrested and deported to Angola my brother my sister others said she found herself escaping into Bahia where she continued with the acculturization I know you want me to break it down to the culturalization I know you still want to break down in fact engaged in positive culture the African culture she taught it to the people of Bahia today when you go to Brazil and you go to Bahia is predominantly black predominantly black and most of them speak with a heavy Yoruba accent and the language also has some Yoruba in it all the way from Africa a lot of their festivals are Yoruba festivals oh my god interlaced with some kind of Islamic culture <laughs> my brother my sister she left behind one child Luis Gonzaga Pinto de Gama who himself was a very powerful man he wrote a lot of poems and was known around Brazil and beyond in fact today my brother my sister we remember this great black woman who was carried all the way from Africa in fact Arabic speaking Yoruba speaking she was raised as a Muslim but as slavery set in she saw Muslims engage actively in slavery she in fact did not want to hear about Christianity because she saw how the Portuguese came in and enslaved a lot of Africans all in the name of the Bible and Christianity she became a pagan and worshipped her ancestors my brother my sister today we remember this great black woman today we remember this woman who fought to free a lot of uh, slaves who fought to free a lot of men and women in fact she was described as a short thin pretty woman with white as snow teeth haughty generous suffering and vengeful she never forgave anybody my brother my sister especially the slave raider today we remember you mommy and we say dem refer do it 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 uni yaminko uni yaminko mommy uni yaminko wate uni yaminko uni yaminko history does not tell us when she died history has not been able to trace her and find out where she went we were told that she went into bahia and started a certain powerful culture and kept bahia black and kept the slave master from entering there today when you go to brazil such places as bahia still maintain a powerful african structure some people said she was exiled all the way into angola today my brother my sister we remember this great black woman Louisa, mine. May her body, mind, and soul rest in perfect peace. In the bedding of knowledge, I ask you, how will the story of Louisa, mine, impact your own life? In the bedding of knowledge, now that you know what to do, do. Be an ani o le a mini o ba fe ya zunda kagane me zaka yini ye ya pa bangu boka ya nung fifi ya inya nu kaina wo bana enu ebe den lela anji ma singa be kunne lela anji ma singa beri. It's been the African history class, and today we've been talking about Louisa, mine. <laughs>